Hey guys, welcome to another episode of ClipX Pro Q&A with Stray. Before we get into this episode, uh, there was a, a change that occurred in ClipX Pro version 1.0.5 that I wanted to cover real quick because it's very significant. For technical reasons, there's certain aspects of ClipX Pro that require scheduling. All right, the easiest example to understand uh, with that is XClips. So when an XClip starts playing, its action list is not triggered immediately. It's scheduled to be triggered at the next possible interval. And up until version 1.0.5, that interval was 100 milliseconds. All right, so I know that doesn't sound like a huge amount of time, but when you're trying to do timing critical tasks, it can be very significant. All right, let me just give you a, an illustration so you can see what's going on. And bear with me, I know this isn't a, a very good one, but imagine this CD is our interval timer, all right, with the Apple logo being the beginning of the, of the interval. All right, so it goes around, and that's 100 milliseconds. It goes back around, and that's 100 milliseconds, and it just keeps looping in that way. If your X clip starts playing towards the beginning of the interval, you have to wait an entire interval, almost 100 milliseconds, uh, before the action list will be triggered. If you start playing it down here, now it's about 50 milliseconds, and over here, well, it'll be about 10 milliseconds or so. In 1.0.5, we've slashed that interval down to 20 milliseconds, and that's huge. Going back to the illustration, uh, the worst case scenario, if you started playing here, you're going to beat about 20 milliseconds. Here, 10 milliseconds, and here, just a few milliseconds. So for timing critical tasks, that makes a, a huge difference, all right? And uh, there's other implications that it has as well. So, for example, Macrobat racks uh, that control parameters, the macros of those racks are now much more responsive. So uh, if you're trying to use ClipX or ClipX Pro uh, for timing critical tasks in the past and weren't able to do that, uh, please give version 1.0.5 a try because I think you'd be pleasantly surprised. All right, so now on to the question for this episode, and it comes from the forum, from forum member uh, dchild1982, and the question is, is it possible to capture the status of all playing clips? If yes, can this be included in a snap action? The answer to both of those questions is yes. Uh, with snap actions, we have what are called modifiers, which allow you to modify what snap actions store. And one of those modifiers is play, which will store the playing status of clips. All right, and what that means is it'll store, you know, which clip is playing on each track. In this way, you can launch groups of clips that are not on the same scene, which can be very useful, and we'll take a look at that now. First of all, this set is one of the demo sets from Sample Logic's Acoustics Pack, and it's a good representation of how a song would be laid out in Session View, with each part of the song on a different scene. And when you think about it, it's not that much different from a DJ set. The only difference being, instead of having the scenes correspond to different sections of the same song, they would correspond to the sections of many different songs. Now this particular song has three verses in it. And for this example, what we'll do is create alternate versions of each of those verses. Now I have a track here called Snaps, which I'll be using to store and recall snapshots. So to start with, I'll insert a clip, and I'll set its quantization to none because we want this to function like a scene trigger would. Now for the name of this clip, I'm going to use the identifier verse A, Alt. And for the action, we want to take a snapshot of the playing state of tracks 1 through 11. I could also include mixer and device settings in this snapshot, but for this example, we're just going to keep it strictly on playing status. And I'll just duplicate that clip a couple times, one for verse B and another for verse C. Now I'll launch the verse scene and try out some different clip combinations. And once I'm happy, I'll take a snapshot of that. Once I have this snapshot stored, I can recall it. To show you that, I'll launch the intro and then launch the snapshot. We'll do the same thing for verse B. And by the way, I could use a launch pad or push or something like that to launch these clips and store and recall snapshots. Uh, just for simplicity's sake, I'm using a mouse. And finally, we'll do the same thing for verse C. And so now that I've got these stored, I can go through and trigger them. Now the really nice thing about snaps is that once they're stored, they can be recalled from any X trigger. So from a MIDI controller with X controls, or from locators and arrangement view with X cues, or from Max for Live, which we'll look at next. Now let's look at the related concept of arranging a song. So taking a song that you made in session view and bringing it into arrangement view. There's two ways that's typically done. The first way is you turn on Arrangement Record and launch the scenes or clips in the order that you want them in. The other popular way of doing it is by dragging clips from Session View into Arrangement View and arranging them that way. In either case, once you're in Arrangement View, 
rearranging could be somewhat cumbersome. For example, if you wanted to swap the positions of two verses, you'd have to move a bunch of stuff around. Of course, that sort of thing is very easy to do in Session View, so let's see if we can find a way of combining the best of both worlds. I have a track here called Arranger that has a Max for Live device combined with a drum rack. This allows you to sequence CliffX Pro actions from the notes in a MIDI clip. This device is available in the triggering actions via notes in a clip lesson that we provide with CliffX Pro. The idea with this device is that you list the actions you want to perform as the drum pad names. So here I've got some scene actions, and then actions that will recall those snaps I created. Now if we go into a clip on this track, we'll see the pad names or actions that we can trigger with our notes, which makes it very easy to see what's going on. So here we've got a 16 bar clip, so this would be a short song, just for an example. Since the notes in a clip are already quantized, we'll want to set global quantization to none for this usage. All right, now we can start sequencing the song. So we'll have the intro play for two bars, maybe the solo play for two bars, one of our snaps for two bars, etc. All right, now we can play that back. and rearrange things on the fly very, very easily. We can also have multiple arrangements. All we need to do is duplicate this clip and then change the arrangement around. Once we're happy with one of these, then we can commit it to arrangement view. So I hope that gave you some ideas on how you can use ClipX Pro to kind of play and arrange your set in different ways. As always, please keep the questions coming and I'll see you in the next episode.